The Santas have googly eyes. Googly freaking googles. Look at those googlies. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifting. This is Mid-Century Wasting. Hello everyone, welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie and thank you for joining me today. Well, as you can see here, we are doing a haul video and I just bumped the camera. So this haul video goes along with the last shopping video that I just posted, the shop along with me video, where I went to a packed, 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 super packed, house in La Habra, California, and did a lot of digging. <laughs> a lot of digging through boxes in a shed, which is, I mean, one of my top favorite things to do, as long as the stuff that's in the shed is good stuff and it's worth it, and there's no, you know, creepy crawlies or sludge of any kind, which there wasn't. This was, this was a mess, you know, there was a lot of stuff, but it was, it was clean. It was maybe a little dusty, but it wasn't, it wasn't like filthy. You know what I mean? Sometimes you go into certain houses and it's like everything's sticky. <laughs> this at least was just stuff had been packed away and not touched for a really long time. So that was fine. This was actually ended up being one of the more surprising places that I've gone to lately because the pictures, the preview pictures online of this, like I almost didn't even go because I was like, eh. It just looked really full of dolls and teddy bears and those types of collectibles. A lot of cow stuff in the kitchen. You know, not my style. But I went anyway and I'm really glad that I did because as you can see, I got a lot of stuff. A lot of little things. Nothing like shocking or worth hundreds of dollars, you know, but still, it was worth my trip and I'm gonna show you everything that I got. Just quickly wanna mention that once again, I am filming down onto the table. I'll be on camera again soon. Also, there is a band-aid on my thumb, so as I'm showing you things, you are gonna see this little truck band-aid. The reason I'm not on camera right now is because once again, I have stitches on my face and I'm looking a little Frankenstein-esque. Just another spot of potential skin cancer that needed to be biopsied and I'm taking care of that. And once the stitches are out and everything's healed up, I will be back on camera. So anyway, let's get on with the haul here. And I'm looking around and I think, I'm not gonna be able to do this in order of how I got everything because it was just a jumbled mess <laughs> and I didn't film the entire time I was in there. The video was plenty long and sometimes it was easier to just, I needed two hands, you know, to dig through some boxes and things. So, well, first of all, I'll say all of this stuff together, I spent $45, which was really good. Made me really happy because a lot of stuff wasn't priced and you never know what's gonna happen when you take it up to the front and they just sort of price things on the fly. Like, I don't know, you never know what they're gonna say. So I was very happy with that price, especially when you see the stuff that like was priced and I knew going into it. Yeah, so she just like bundled everything else and I paid $45. So I'll start by showing you the stuff that I know what the price was. Stuff that was particularly priced that I can remember. <laughs> and I'm looking around and there's not that many things that I can actually remember what the price was. So we'll start with, we'll start with the yearbooks. How about that? Here is a yearbook, high school yearbook. This is gonna be a little tricky to hold this where you can see it, but I tend to pick these up when I can. The older ones, you know. This is a 1945 yearbook. Let's see if we I can remember what school this is. Oh wait, oh yeah, okay, I take it back. This is the UCLA. This is not high school. This is the university college yearbook. This is the 1945 UCLA yearbook. And obviously that year is interesting because of the war. You know, men who were in college weren't in the war. So it's just a, an interesting little tidbit of of history here with that. This is obviously local to me. I am in Southern California, so this is not uncommon for me to find a UCLA book. I'm trying to see if there's any signatures in here. I don't know that there are. This is interesting. There's these really thick divider pages in here. That's kind of neat. Oh my, what is that? That is made out of some sort of food? What on earth? Can't say I understand that one. Anyway, there you go. I pick up yearbooks 
when I can, when they're not, you know, destroyed or anything. This one's in amazing condition, especially for the age. I don't think there's any signatures in this one, which I didn't really notice. I tend to prefer them when they do have signatures, just because it's a fun little thing to read. But this one does not, but that's okay. Still good. And vintage yearbooks. They're a slow seller, I'll say, on eBay. But if you have room to store them, you just list them on eBay and just let them sit, and they do sell. And each yearbook tends to go for about $20 on eBay. That's kind of just like the average typical going rate for a vintage yearbook on eBay. Unless there is a celebrity in the yearbook. And I don't know if there is in this. I have not checked. Perhaps there was a celebrity that went to college at UCLA in 1945. It's possible. I mean, UCLA is right next to Hollywood, so you never know if there's a movie star in here or an athlete or something. There's a website that you can look up the school and the year and see if there was a celebrity or a famous person, a notable person in that yearbook. I just haven't done that yet. But anyway, the yearbooks were $5 each. I got another one right here too. I just lost the pumpkin back there. Yeah, the yearbooks were $5 each and they tend to sell for about $20 on eBay. So, and yeah, they sit for a while, but I've got a storage cupboard in my house where I can store them very easily. It's kind of just like a fun thing to have in my eBay store too, so I like it. This one is from 1936. This one's a lot older. There's a tab here, so I'm assuming this is the whoever's yearbook this was. They're probably on this page somewhere. Just look at the hairstyles and clothing and kind of like the art deco little patterns on each photo. Cause you know, this is 1936. This is, this is a fun era. What yearbook is this by the way? Forgot to look at that. I'm sure it's in California somewhere. That's definitely California Spanish architecture right there. This was at Fullerton Junior College. And which is funny is we just drove by there like last weekend. That's really funny. Just so happens that we just drove by, drove by there. But anyway, there's that one. That one's in really good shape too, especially 1936. That is getting up there in age. Okay, the next thing I'll show you are the glasses. I was admiring some glasses, but I figured they'd be kind of expensive. And then I looked up on the cabinet, there was a price guide set up there and I saw that all the glasses were $1 each. So I went back and I just snatched these up right away because these are very cool. I'll just show you one of them. There are four of them. But as you can see, God, sorry about my band-aid, it looks horrible. Um, they are Korok. These are Korok glasses. And you might know Korok from their trays, like the inlaid trays. Oh, you know what, I have one right here. I'll just give you a reminder real quick in case you don't know. I just happen to have a Korok tray sitting right here next to me. This is a little dirty, pardon my dirtiness here. Yeah, it's these trays that have all the unique inlaid wood patterns. Well, they also made glasses, barware. And these are adorable penguins. And they've got gold on there. Lots of times you see the gold is washed off, dishwashered off. Now these have a little bit of, as you can see on the black there, they're a little, I don't know, mottled kind of, a little faded maybe, but I haven't tried cleaning them yet. So they might be a little faded, possibly a little bit dishwasher damaged, I'm not sure. But once I clean them, I'll know for sure if that's just some sludge on there, or if the black is actually sort of, like if the shine of the black has kind of become more matte because they were put in the dishwasher, which would be a bummer, but it's not the worst case I've ever seen. And you know, it was $4 for the four of them, which is a good price, a really good price for, especially for uh, people who collect penguin things, mid-century barware. These are really, really cool. These would go great with the West Bend Penguin Ice Bucket and Shaker, Cocktail Shaker. If you have a whole penguin bar theme going on, these are really perfect. And the other two glasses that I got are kind of funny. They are American flag glasses and they say Whittier, which is in California, a city, President Nixon's hometown. Now that wasn't his birthplace. I think Nixon's birthplace was Yorba Linda, something like that. I only know that because his presidential library is out there somewhere. I liked these because of the flag, not necessarily because of the president. Not that I care one way or the other about the president. 
because that was a little before my time. But I love these for 4th of July. And I have a set of American flag glasses from probably the 70s that kind of look similar to this. And I like putting them out at 4th of July. They're really neat. So I thought these were cool. And you get a little bit of, you know, local Southern California little nod here to where I live. So I picked those up. There was one more that was completely dishwasher damaged. So unfortunately I left that one behind, but I got a pair of them here anyway. And they're in mostly good shape. There's a couple little tiny paint loss, little flea bites, but no chips or, or anything like that. It does have an address on the bottom that I'm trying not to show you. There's like a sticker on the bottom of who these belong to. So there you go. And those were a dollar each. So that was $2 for the set. Okay. The only other thing I know for sure on here that was priced was the thermos. She wanted $8 for the thermos, which I thought was kind of funny given that this was the, actually the most expensive thing that I bought. <laughs> So I was like, okay, but when you average out the price of everything, it's, it's still a fine price for this thermos. And I just, I really liked the design on it. It is so geometric and I like that it's mostly all red. This will look really good at Christmas time in some kind of a display or vignette. You can use this for hot cocoa at Christmas. I mean, the inside is very, very good still. The glass is intact. I'm not going to take the time to open it because I got a lot of stuff to go through here, but it's got a little a few dents here and there, and this is kind of dirty. I need to clean it still, but overall it's in very good shape. And this is the pint size. So there you go. That was $8, which is kind of funny. But you know, when people are pricing things kind of on the fly, they're gonna put higher prices on things that they personally like themselves. <laughs> so she probably just likes the old thermoses and thought that was a fair price for it, which it is. It's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna like go across, you know, because some of the stuff you saw me grab, some of it you didn't, some of it was out in the shed, some of it was in the house. It's just, it was a lot. I did keep the banker box on the table just because technically I got that at the house too. I may have kind of stolen it, although I'm sure they would have given it to me if I had just asked, but <laughs> it was in the shed housing some of the Halloween stuff and I started to realize that I needed a box and for some reason I didn't bring one or it was full from the last estate sale I had been to that day. Yeah, so I just sort of emptied it out there in the shed and took it. So, <laughs> so there you go, there's that box. <laughs> Um, all right, so here's something that I found inside the house and I really got this because of the amazing packaging. These are Hal's, Halzam, Halzam checkers and I love the colors on this box. I just love the fonts and the graphics. Everything about it is fantastic and really cool and there are checkers inside there too as you can see. So I thought that was a fun purchase. And again, who knows how much I paid for this. It was all just kind of bundled. She had given some more prices to things as she was digging through, but I don't remember what she was pricing necessarily. And then she just looked at the rest of the box and goes, how about $8 for the rest of it? And I was like, okay, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> so that consists mostly of the stuff that I got in the shed because that was at the bottom. So out in that shed was like the holiday stuff and all of that together was $8 with some of the other stuff in here too. So you did not see me grab these. This is a whole little box filled with these die cut angels with these really cute little faces on them. They're double sided. I have no idea what these were originally used for, but I mean, it's ephemera now, <laughs> so. These will probably be in package toppers at Christmas time and in ephemera bundles that I plan, still plan to sell eventually. I will include these in, in there. And you know, I probably paid pennies for it. So there's a ton of them in here. I mean, this is just, this is loaded. Like, look at, look at all those. Like there's, there's a lot of these in here. There's that. I got two sets. This is just strange. I don't know what the deal is here. They're very dusty, but they're in the original package. These are two sets of salt and pepper shakers. As you can see, it says salt and pepper shakers there. And they've got these, these little deers on them. Never mind the dirt and hair and stuff that's on the package, but these have never been used. They're still sealed in the package and they've got these little deers and they're, they're both the same. That one's upside down for some reason. And oh, is that a dude? 
There's a little guy. There's a little guy with a teepee. And it said something about an Indian school down there. Here, maybe you can see better on this one, if it'll focus. There we go. St. Labre Indian School in Ashland, Montana. So I, I don't know why or what, who, what, when, where, why, or how on, on these, but I don't know, when I see something old looking with the original packaging, I just snag it and see they say salt and pepper. That one does too, it's just on the bottom, it's flipped over. But anyway, I think it was like a dollar a, a set for these or something similar to that. Next, I got a couple of flower frogs and these I believe she said a dollar each. I'm pretty sure these, this was two dollars here. I liked this one as I try not to stab myself because it has the, the stuff on the bottom. See, it's got the frog right there. It's a little dirty on the bottom too. I think it was, it had some like that floral sticky stuff to put it into the vase or pot or whatever she had it in. But anyway, and this one doesn't say anything on the bottom. This one's a little smaller, but there you go. Two flower frogs. This was cool. These were sealed again in the package still. Some invitations with the patriotic American colors and the eagle on there. I gotta think, I don't know, I gotta think it's probably from the 70s, but it might not be. Maybe they were just made for people having 4th of July parties. Hey, 4th of July is gonna be here before you know it. So I figured why not? And they're sealed. Next, I'll show you this little pumpkin. Happy little pumpkin. You know, it's just one of those honeycomb, crepe paper, collapsible pumpkins. And again, I'm sure I paid pennies for this. She probably didn't even see that it was in there. Okay, so next I have this giant stack here of crocheted patriotic 4th of July pot holders. And I just absolutely love these. I'm gonna say these were probably from 1976, just a guess. These are super vintage, super kitschy, super everything. And there's a bunch of them. So we've got a blue bell with white trim, a white bell with blue trim, another blue bell with white trim, a bunch of these knotted ones. One, two, three, four of these knotted ones, another white bell with blue trim, and a red bell with red trim. So bunches of them. I thought that was cool. Those look really good hanging on a fridge with the little cutesy little hook magnets and also very useful for 4th of July. If you're having like a potluck or something, you could use those to put the hot plates on. So there you go. So this is a little interesting thing here. This is a pack of colored pencils and it's in the original packaging. Check out the date on this. This might be the front actually. I don't know which side was the front, but look at the date, 1933. I don't know, that's just kind of amazing that a pack of colored pencils could last that long and that the packaging itself could last that long. Now I think, push in this end, so this is an easel. Okay, so it pushes up like that. Oh my gosh, I didn't notice the guy was in jail in there too. Look at that. Oh wow, look, they were sharpened without a automatic pencil sharpener. They're sh sharpened with like a knife. You see that, how they're, <laughs> how they were sharpened? But anyway, and then it's got the little stand so you can stand them up as you use them. Yeah, kind of, kind of exceptional. Wait, I didn't see the back. Let's see what happens on the back when you push this up. Just being very careful not to tear any of these little pieces. Oh, look, he's going down the slide. Look at that. The little monkey guy is going down the slide. Isn't that neat? I thought that was so neat. Now, there is some, you know, writing on there, lolly and 15 cents, but I don't know. I don't think that takes away from how cool these are. I'm gonna leave this stack of ephemera for the end, just because it's lots of little bits to go through, so I'd rather just save that to the end. Here are two absolutely gorgeous Vera napkins. And these, I swear, these look like there's no way these have ever been used. These are crisp and have all the folds and creases in them still. I mean, look at this with the daisies. And I don't know, are those, are those meant to be poppies? I kind of feel like they are. You know, poppies are my favorite flower. Technically California poppies are my favorite flower, but I like the whatever other kind of poppies as well. I just love the bright orange and red colors of poppies. So yeah, and they're, they've got the Vera signature on there. It's Vera Newman, which I always forget what her last name is because you see this on a lot of mid-century textiles. And there's so many designers named Vera. 
you know, Vera, Vera Wang, Vera Bradley. So I always forget which Vera it is. My brain just doesn't want to compute that. But anyway, here's two Vera Newman napkins. Beautiful print. Now I was kind of showing you, there's a string hanging down here, but I don't think that's gonna matter. I think you could probably clip that off, but I'm not gonna mess with it. Whoever buys it can mess with it because I would hate to do something wrong. <laughs> Here's a set of nice little set of chopsticks. I don't know what any of this says because it's not in English or any language that I can read. I'm not gonna presume what language that is even. I'm not gonna presume, I'm not gonna guess because <laughs> I just truly don't know. I don't know the Asian characters. I got these just because they were still in the box, I thought they were nicer than many chopsticks, but I don't I don't believe that these would be collectible in any way. I think these are just kind of like nice chopsticks to have. They're brand new and they're in a box. So we'll see if I can figure anything out about those, but if I can't, then they'll just be what I eat my sushi with. I have a few sets of, of nicer, and when I say nicer, I mean like not the rough wooden ones that they give you at the restaurant, you know, at the takeout restaurant. So they're just a little more pleasant to eat off of. And we do eat sushi and Chinese food and stuff a lot at our house. And I like using the chopsticks. So that's that. All right, we'll get into the Christmas, Christmassy stuff. Uh, so here's some um, bits of things to use for crafting. We've got some nice, I don't know what all this is necessarily, but it's that kind of crinkly it's not the really rubbery plastic it's kind of like the brittle plastic or the I, I don't know it's it's like a laminated almost enamel kind of finish on it and these little these little bead deals i don't know i feel like this could be really pretty in a way with some white doves or white deers or something it's just very woodlandy and nice again i would think that would be for crafting and then this one is my jam this is the good tacky plastic Christmas that I love oh so much. And these have these weird little kind of felted berries on there. I mean, this is the really, you know, plasticky plastic. It's the, oh, this piece just came off. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, this is like a little, you know, candle ring or something, which great idea to put some plastic right around an open flame. Always the smartest ideas back in like the 60s. I'm myself looking for this kind of stuff. Anything super, super crunchy plastic for Christmas. That's something that I am actively searching for for my own Christmas decor because I just, I know it's so bad, so tacky, and it's so wonderful to me. I can't explain it. It's just so kitschy is what it is. It's the kitschiest Christmas thing you can have is like plastic foliage, 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 foliage or foliage. Yet again, another word that I don't know how to say. But anyway, plastic greenery, love it. This was just too weird to pass up. Here is maybe a craft, I'm thinking. It looks like a homemade kind of ornament ball. It's got painting of trees on the outside, but look at the actual gnome Santa dude in there. I mean, he's just a big ball of fluff. He's got a very strange, sleepy, mad face, and the nose is just, you know, very, very large and confusing for a Santa. It's, he's got like a Rudolph, a Rudolph nose in there. You can kind of see it there. And this looks like it's got some serious age to it to be honest. It's not maybe looking as yellow as it is in person. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I don't know. It's just, oh look, what's it got painted on the back? I didn't even notice that. It's got a little church scene painted on the back. Isn't that sweet? I don't know if he was supposed to have snow in him, but if he did, he doesn't anymore. <laughs> How could I pass him up? I mean, really, there's, there's no way. He had to just come home with me. Welcome to the collection of oddities, Mr. Santa. This is just, the white with green and red holly, holly berry sort of pattern that I collect for Christmas. I have, I'm getting a nice little collection here. I didn't have much last Christmas, but I've picked up a few extra pieces so far here in the off season. So that's gonna be fun. This is just, I don't know, maybe a hobbyist. It kind of looks, this looks hobbyist to me. He's got like the painted leaves, but it's well done. It doesn't say anything on the back, so. Um, yeah, but I like it. Nice little trinket tray or serving dish. These were a great find, I thought. There are two of these. I found one and then dug and dug some more and found another. And these are the hanging door jingle bell 
deals. Obviously crocheted. And there's the bells. And they've got these little Santas on there. And they go down. This is pretty long too. I'd say at least two feet long. And then you count the tassels maybe a few more inches beyond that. And there's two of them. So I thought that was a must, a must grab. And they're also in very good condition. Oh, did we, did we mention? I don't think we did. I don't think I, I did a good enough job here mentioning this. The Santas have googly eyes. Googly freaking googles. Look at those googlies. So when I saw the googly eyes, it was just like, okay, into the box. You're mine now. And I love that there's two of them. I could keep one for myself and then be twins with somebody. Again, another just random little crocheted homemade piece here a little wreath ornament this was i think one of the first things that i picked up where i was like mm, i think i need a box and it was all over like this you know but it's got the little little bit of tacky plastic christmas little holly berry on there so yeah <laughs> had to here's another yarn art guy this is a santa <laughs> I don't know. He's just, he's just goofy. He's cute. I like this cutesy homemade crafty stuff. Can you focus? There we go. So it's got like wooden beads for eyes and the nose. Again, I didn't know, was Santa supposed to have a big red nose like this? I guess he was because he was so jolly, aka jolly on the sauce, drunken jolly. And there you go. I mean, I almost feel like this is a, a cute thing to model a craft after with my kids maybe in a year or two when they get a little bit older because it's very simple. Obviously, it's just looping knots on here. So I don't know. thought it was cute. I think that's all of the Christmas stuff. Yes, it is. So uh, minus the Christmas ephemera that I got here, but I got some Valentine's ornaments, which is always kind of fun, especially now that Katie at Vintage and Vinyl and I do a Valentine's Day aluminum Christmas tree decorating contest. Should be an annual thing now. And um, yeah, we did it for Valentine's Day to do a Valentine's Day themed aluminum tree. So here's some heart ornaments, which is just absolutely perfect for that. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So yes, please. And a nice set of heart stickers still in the package. I mean, when I see stickers still in the package, nobody's gonna charge you a ton for these. And there's just such a myriad of uses. And stickers are not the cheapest thing in the world to go buy brand new at the store. So getting them for pennies lauded together with a bunch of other stuff is, you know, that's the way that I like to shop. <laughs> so, you know, my kids can use these. I can use these for package toppers. I can literally take the sticker off and put it on a package if I needed to. Crafting, I'm always going through stickers. So I like these a lot. Junk journaling, obviously, you know, I just, I always get stickers when I can. This was another thing, one of the first things that I grabbed in that shed where I was like, eh, I better get a box. And these are just some Halloween taper candles, the little jack-o'-lanterns on there. And I like that they're still in the original package because the package is cool in and of itself. It's not particularly old, I don't think. It does say made in China on the back, but also I don't see a barcode, so they might have like a little bit of age to them, but I don't think these are actually pre-barcode. I would say these are probably 80s, but they're nice. I guess they could be 70s too. When you look at the font there on the Halloween, that's kind of more of a 70s font, but I, got, I can't imagine them lasting that long, but maybe they did. But anyway, these are just something that I personally like to have. I like these little novelty taper candles. And I just think these ones are cute. They're a little, little scuffed up and smudged up, but I mean, it's Halloween, right? What does it matter? Everything's supposed to be a little dirty and crusty and spooky. <laughs> okay, so we are on now to the ephemera portion of the show. Since we're still on kind of the holiday stuff, I'll start with the holiday ephemera. And these are a couple of Christmas Carol books. And I've had some of these before. I love these. The graphics in these are always awesome. We'll start with this one because it's a little less awesome, but let's see if there's a date on this one. Yeah, so this one's 1935. And I don't mean less awesome, just less of what is appealing to me, but it's still extremely awesome. And you've got all of that in there in the back. And these are just really cute little things for, you know, just to put out at Christmas. I guess you could cut them up in junk journal with them if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't. Not unless they were shredded, you know? This one is the one that makes me just super happy with the <laughs> little children and people on there. Very, 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 very cute. This one is 1956. Sorry for all the 
strange shadows and things on here, but lighting is not perfect in here right now. Look at these graphics. Look at how cute. Look at that. I would like to scan this. Oh, even the little border on the edge. I would like to just scan these and use these graphics for, you know, digitally for other things because I feel like it's just so cute. It needs to be preserved. I just love it. Gotta hand it to the 50s and 60s cartoon graphics. We're just, you know, they were just, they're just so cute. And then there's Santa on the back with the kids. Now this is a little, you know, crumpled and it's been in that shed in a pile for who knows how long, but I might be able to flatten it out. <laughs> I could put a couple heavy books on it for a while and see what happens, but even still, I think it's just very, very cute. Okay, last little pile here. It's not really a little pile. It kind of looks like a little pile, but it's not as little as it. It's a little deceiving, but I'll start with some photos. These photos, well, this one I believe is a postcard. Yeah, so these are those photo postcards. You know, you get your photo taken and they turn it into postcards and you can mail it to someone. And this is um, Guadalajara written here. And it does say it on the back too. And it says 1957. I feel like they used a Q, but maybe that is supposed to be a G, but did, did Guadalajara, does that start with a Q? Or did it start with a Q? Guadalajara? I don't know. But anyway, this is Mexico of August. 1957 and I want to to see how cute her dress is because I love it. These were like touristy things I believe. This one I love particularly because this was from Knott's Berry Farm which is I believe the world's first theme park if I'm not mistaken and that's just down the street from me in Buena Park, California and they have a gold mining town, ghost town theme there and they very much did when it was first opened. That was like one of the main only things that they had once they turned it into a theme park. But it was and I believe still is a berry farm and you can get the knots jam and jelly. But I don't know. I don't think they have berries growing maybe anywhere on the property anymore. <laughs> but they used to way back in the day. I'm sure they grow them elsewhere now, unfortunately. But there it is on the back. There wasn't a date on this. I wish there was. But you know, it looks of the same era as the other ones. Look at this lady. She's got this fancy hat, fancy gloves. Look at the brooch on her jacket. And that was to go to Knott's Berry Farm. Which think of like how we dress now to go to like Disneyland or Disney World or Universal or any of those theme parks, amusement parks. I mean I dress like basically like the way I would dress to go to the gym or to like sleep. <laughs> I do not dress that fancy. But of course um it was a completely different experience back then. These I love so very much because I have my own family photos from members of my family that look pretty much just like this. And that's Tijuana. And this was a thing to do. You go to Tijuana and you get your picture taken wearing a sombrero um, on a donkey <laughs> or on a donkey cart. And that was just the thing to do. So I had to pick these up. I mean, I swear, like I have a picture of like my dad and my sister. I think I, there's a picture with me as a baby on one of these too with them. I think there is, you know, if I happen to find that, I'll put that in there. This one again, it's one of those postcard ones and there's no date or anything on the back. Here's another Tijuana. They just look like they're having a grand old time. Isn't that cute? There's just stuff in the background and there's that's a zebra. That's not a donkey or maybe it's a donkey painted to look like a zebra because I know they did stuff like that too. Don't see a date on this one either. That one's got a little splotch of something on the back but it doesn't really take away from it. And this one I thought was the coolest one because it's from Havana, Cuba, 1940. Moro Castle, which I don't know what that is. And then you can see all the people. Look at how awesome they're dressed. Oh, it's so 1940 Cuba. I love everything about this. And you know, stuff from Cuba is not exactly easy to come by. So that's pretty special. And it does have some writing on the back. It's got um, just some names of people. Oh, wow. Mr. and Mrs. John A. Seahorn. Do we have Seahorns in our family? So I might have to look that up uh, genealogy wise. How, what a trip that would be if I stumbled upon a old photo of somebody uh, related to. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me doing genealogy research or going to estate sales. So here is a big old pile of little 
pamphlets and things. I'm gonna go through them really fast because I think this video is already really long. But anyway, champion yo-yo tricks. I mean, my God. Let's see if there's a date on this one that I can see quickly. 1960. Boom. So I don't know. Maybe this came with a a yo-yo. It's like a little cartoon. Teaches you how to do yo-yo tricks. Oh yes. Okay. So food care for dental health. I have to mention someone in this house, and I, I don't know if it was the husband or not, but someone in this house was in the dental world. I don't know if it was a, a dentist or a dental hygienist or what, but there's a lot of dentisty kind of stuff there, which not exactly my favorite since I'm somewhat phobic of the dentist. But anyway, this is also the teacher's copy. So maybe that's a clue. Maybe they were a, a dental teacher. But this one is from 1955. It's the second edition and it's about foods that are good for your teeth. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. And again, the graphics on the front, the teens and teeth. Here is a pamphlet for teaching teenagers about their teeth and it's dated 1957, originally 1951. And you got the pamphlet here for teeth care. Check that one out. Mickey Mouse Club. This is before my time obviously, but I still recognize Mickey Mouse Club when I come across it. And again, it's a dental thing. Jimmy Dodd, Tommy Cole, and Doreen Tracy. So tell me if you remember those people. There's no date on this, but I'm sure the people themselves would give it some sort of a date. You could see when they were Mouseketeers. 1958 dental health education materials. Here's another one. Here's a little cartoon. It says, he only pulled one of mine, but I knocked out two of his in the scuffle. And it's a guy all beat up coming out of a dentist's office. Isn't that cute? The kind of humor only a dentist could love. Here is Dentistry at Your Service. Another little pamphlet. Uh, I don't know if there's a age on this one, but I mean, you're calling, you're calling Webster 38571, so obviously that's got some age to it. No zip code, too. It's Los Angeles 19, California. <laughs> that tells you something. I just like the old graphics so much. And here's a thing about toothbrushing. I figure I would probably lot all these together and put them on Etsy as like a dentist ephemera, vintage dentist ephemera lot. This one is dated 1957 because you never know if somebody is like a dentist or going to dental school or something, they might have a reason to want all of this. Now these I love. These are little kid cartoons, just little handout things. Aren't those graphics just adorable. There's a bunch of them. A little dog and a cute little boy. Nature's toothbrushes. <laughs> Eat your celery, kids. <laughs> Yours for keeps. And this is another tooth health kind of thing. I think it's like a, a little storybook. And this is 1957. There you go. Oh, and it's, look, it's an Orange County specific thing here too. So I like that. I didn't realize that when I first got it, but cute graphics in this one too. <laughs> and then this is actually, I wasn't sure I had to glance one more time at this, but this is tooth related too. It's Little Red Sky. It's a little story using like Native American characters to tell a story about like tooth health. <laughs> The content of this booklet pertaining to dental health has been approved by the American Dental Association. But was it approved by the Native Americans that you're depicting? Doubtful. 1948. Pretty amazing. And then lastly, two more little just bits here of paper. It's more of these little like good practice. Oh, this one has a date, 1954. It's a little American Dental Association little booklets is what these are. For good teeth and a healthy mouth. This one. Oh, it's a dental record. That's gross. <laughs> and this one, I don't see a date. Oh, 1956, right there, right on the back. There you go. So I thought that was fun. There were so many papers and photos and things that I had to really narrow down my focus of what I was gonna grab because I could have filled that entire stolen box up with nothing but ephemera. I could have filled up five of them. I didn't show much of that because again, that was one of those things where I had to be like 
digging and couldn't really film and, and manage all of the ephemera that they had at one time. So I decided, once I started seeing all this dentist stuff, I decided I'm just gonna grab all the little dentist things that I can find and that will be the ephemera I get from this house because otherwise, I mean, they had a bunch of like Shriner stuff. The guy must have been a Shriner and so there's all this like Shriner ephemera and it didn't interest me as much. I thought the dentist stuff, especially because so much of it had those cool graphics, that definitely stood out to me as really cute and different ephemera that I don't normally see. So, <sighs> I'm worn out just from this haul, same way I was from shopping there. <laughs> anyway, like always, if you see anything in this spread that you are interested in purchasing, shoot me an email, midcenturywasted at gmail.com. I'm slow at listing on eBay and Etsy, but you're welcome to always check those stores out as well. But emailing me, it seems to be the quicker, easier, more direct way to purchase something. So just let me know if you're interested in anything. I'm looking around, I don't see much of anything that I plan to keep. I mean, except for some of this Christmassy stuff. There's a couple little Christmassy things that I'm keeping and probably the chopsticks. <laughs> Maybe these guys too. I'll probably keep those too. But those aren't really worth much anyway. The rest of the stuff is for sale. I have a feeling the Korok penguin glasses are like the shining jewel of this. And if you're interested in those, you better hurry up and, and send me an email because I have a feeling those are gonna go quick. So, Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've got really fun stuff coming up on my channel, so if you haven't yet, now is the perfect time to subscribe. It's free. You just click the little subscribe button, and all that means is my videos will sort of show up first on your subscription page, and you'll be more aware of when I post a new video. And if you really wanna know what's going on, hit the notification bell, and you'll get a little alert every time I post a new video or go live because going live is something that's gonna be happening more often. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, all the, all the places, all the social media places, I'm there. Um, I'm even on TikTok for God's sake, Lord only knows why. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Bye.